realize that a lot of NLP, what, you know, people in the early days of neurolinguistic programming, if you don't know what that is, we can discuss it, but was a tool primarily for therapists. And so people were learning to do something to another person to help that person change. And I went, why do you, why is it only about doing something to another person? It should be about what I can do for myself. And so I started introducing some of the concepts in, in workshops and seminars that I was doing around the country. And then ultimately, in, you know, I had a retreat center for 10 years, a hundred acre retreat center that we used and people would fly in from all around the world. So I very early on developed a, a really incredible worldwide reputation because one, at the time, there were only a handful of people teaching neurolinguistic programming and or doing what I do because my background is in the meditation. It's in entertainment. I'm an actor and a filmmaker. Um, I'm a meditator, a hypnotist. I'm, my background is in whole brain learning and accelerated learning, NLP and related disciplines. So I brought a whole bunch of different things into the mix where a lot of people were just teaching therapy or, or trying to do one thing at a time. And I was like, I was doing multiple things. And primarily one of the things that, that um, we really, what I really emphasized, which is now almost a part of everybody's programs was dancing and singing and celebration. It wasn't about getting, you know, pumped up with adrenaline, but it was about going, if you're going to learn, you learn more when you're having fun and you're delighted and you're thrilled like you did when you were a child out playing than you do sitting in a classroom, scrunching up your face going, am I ever going to get this? Or, you know, sitting in dyads and triads, you know, with other people, you know, uh, pontificating about this stuff. When you make it an experience for people, and they can experience applying principles and practices and they can experience the life change in the workshop, then they can carry that from the workshop because they have a taste of it. They know what to do. It's not cerebral. It's a, it's in their DNA at that point. Well, or, or they can put it in their DNA and make it part of themselves. I don't hear you. Oh, you're muted. A guy like me, yeah, the dog was barking. They, they, they exiled me to my house. So a guy like me that wants to, you know, I, I've done a bunch of NLP work, and I don't know that most of you have. And it's pretty obvious to me that Dr. Lisa Singletary, medical doctor, with all the people that she's tagging on this show, she not only has done some NLP, she's very familiar with you. And that makes me happy because people should be familiar with your work because it's built on science, not hype. Right. Rex is the least promotional guy you ever want to meet in your life. But once you get a little taste of him, you can't get enough. And taking guys like me and having me understand that I can literally open up my head and take a look inside and figure out what I like and what I don't like and literally change the files around. That's what he taught me out of his book. And it was magic. And so then I went and spent $5,000 on a course after that to reinforce what it was Rex showed me in his book. And it made me realize, number one, what a kick-ass book it was. But number two, how powerful my brain is. And all I got to do is stay plugged in with guys like Rex. Rex, the people listening to this show are all trying to build something beyond their complete range of building anything. And usually it's in a completely different profession, like Dr. Lisa Singletary. She was a doctor, a medical doctor, and reinvented herself. That took some rewiring of her brain. brain. My friend, Steve Bastrom, the school teacher turned exerciser turned man about the world. How do these guys continue that on, and how will your book and your work help? Wow, great question. And... Uh... I hope I do it justice. Um, first off, let me say that not all NLP is created equal. There's a lot of NLP out there that's not worth bothering with. And I and I say that just so that you know. I'm a huge fan of my own process and my own developments and contributions in the field because I pull from science and other backgrounds as well as the things that I've already said. So um, what I did early on is I decided it's not just about fixing people. It's about living a wonderful life. Some people can get unstuck, but then they're unstuck and they go nowhere. <laughs> they're still kind of stuck, but they no longer have that problem. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to help people create a wonderful life because I have in my life had numerous crises and one I talked about. And I realized that just getting through a crisis wasn't enough. It was how do you live with joy and passion? How do you how do you up your your um, 
your ability to have wonderful relationships, how do you up your ability to have the kind of wealth that you want, the kind of leisure time that you'd like to have, the kind of lifestyle that you want, you know, and, and a lot of people want things. And believe me, I've spent a lot of time in billionaire and millionaire homes only to, to spend time with people who are miserable with everything that anyone could ever want because they've got everything, but they haven't transformed themselves. So what my focus has been on is how do you transform the inside because it's from within to without? How do you take hold of your mind and manage your mindset so that it works for you? How do you activate your attitude so that you're not only winning all along the way, you're unstoppable and you live life with enthusiasm and passion and, and with love. I mean, you know, the, the, the greatest thing we can do is love one another, uplift one another, edify one another, forgive ourselves and forgive other people and to move forward in a positive way. And there's so much negativity and so much, you know, misinformation and so many problems that everybody's focused on. I wanted to say, look, even in spite of all of that, you don't have to have that drag you down. You can live a life knowing that that's going on and being separate of it. You know, the Bible says, be in the world, but not of the world. And how do you do that? You, by, you do it by the renewing of your mind. You renew your mind and your feelings. You, you put a you speak only to bless, heal, prosper, edify, uplift, transform, and transcend. You you make sure that your self-talk and your conversations with other people are glorious, not less than glorious, you know, and you aim yourself in a positive direction and, and, and allow other people to join you in that. And when you do that, life becomes a true celebration. So my tagline is celebrate everything. Because if you think it's going to be a problem, it will be a problem. This we know from research. And if you think it's going to be a blessing, it can be a blessing. And this we know from research. And we know your mindset, your attitude. Tom, the number one predictor for success in every area of your life is attitude. And this was discovered you know, more than 40 years ago. Uh, one of the preeminent studies was Travis Air Force Base did a, a study with 157 cancer patients and, dis and dif discovered at that time, at that time, that the attitude toward the treatment was the better indicator, was it was the greatest indicator, the number one indicator for success of the treatment. I mean, what you thought about it made a huge difference. And at that time, in the 60s and 70s, very few, very few dis, uh, studies on the placebo effect, beliefs, you know, and, and believing, you know, positively, perception, and, uh, and visualization or self-talk. Now there's more than 45,000, you know, related to the placebo alone. And we know that if you're stressed and worried and fearful and anxious or sad or depressed, it's impacting your immune system. And when your immune system is impacted and it's creating stress and this cortisol is released and all this kind of stuff, you're not making good decisions. We know that your peripheral vision actually shrinks because when you're out in the jungle and and a lion or, or tiger attacked you, your your body responds by shutting down your peripheral vision so that you can scan for an opening to either flee or to fight. All of your, your extremities get your blood so you can run or fight. You know, your thinking process is shut down because you don't need to be thinking about stuff. You only need to be surviving at that moment. So when people live from chronic stress, whether that's fear, worry about money, anxious relationships, whatever it might be, the, the amount of um, harm that they could be doing to their body is 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 legion, and so. Hey Rex, let's take a quick break. Okay. We are on the Genesis Communication Network. We've got Rex Sykes, who is amazing. If you don't know this guy, you've got to track him down at RexSykes.com. He's going to blow your mind. You're going to love him. We're coming back right after this. Thanks for listening. All right, we got a short break, thirty seconds, Jason. You're going to tell me when we're back because I don't have a clock yet and I'm all jacked up here. So that would be awesome. So just tell me on the text and I'll come back on. This is beautiful, Tom. I hope I'm not rambling too much. Well, you're doing great. I, I would tell you. So it's – and we're back. It is Tom Chanel. It is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show with no Adrian but Rex Sykes. And we are really, really happy to have all of you listening. It is great. The callers, I look at the screen – the call screen. I see Cheryl Kissel, my friend from way back. This woman is amazing. My beautiful friend, Daniela. It is just beautiful to see you people. And here's the deal. Rex Sykes is somebody I have imminent respect for because he literally changed my brain. And I've wanted him on this show for a long time, like every one of you, because of this. 
you can reprogram yourself, but it's not a spectator sport. You've got to get in the game. And if you go to Rex, how, what are you doing on Clubhouse? Are you literally teaching people this stuff on Clubhouse? I do. Well, it, I have a show every or a room every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, and wherever else you are around the world. It's the Gratitude Activator, and what we do is we discuss topics. I, I've written a blog since about 2006 or seven. Every day, every single day, never missed it, never missed a day. And uh, I write a blog, and um, and we have conversations around that so that we help people understand. You know, one, how important this is, two, that they can do it, and, and three, um, we get to share and, and I get to contribute in that way and be in touch with people. Uh, so Clubhouse, by the way, I owe being on Clubhouse to you. You were the guy who, who invited me to Clubhouse. I ignored your invite for a little bit of a while. I mean, I went and checked it out and went, okay. And about two or three months later, I went back and went, this is cool. Thank you, Tom. This is awesome. And I've been there ever since. So um but what happened helpful. then is you stuck around and, and it worked and it's worked for you. You no. built a brand there and people like are following. And I see you getting interviewed by Dr. Finance, a lot of pretty doggone important people. So it's really helped you elevate your game. And do people keep coming in there? Has it died off a little bit? What are you going to call that? What was the last thing you said? Is it, what do you, what do you think of, what do you, what do you think of Clubhouse these days? Is it growing? Is it powerful? I think, well, I think Clubhouse is kind of it's kind of like water reaches its own level, and I think that there was an initial, you know, uh, enthusiasm for everything, and then it kind of slacks off. And um, we're noticing, you know, kind of a steady uh, where we are. A little bit of new people coming in all the time, but um, I think uh, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Clubhouse was surging. Now, now it's more of a sustained, a, a steady or sustained growth. But they've changed some tools. And the reason I want to talk about that is because I want people to find you. Because it is so important that you guys find Rex Sykes and get a little piece of his knowledge and his intellect. Because what you're going to do after that, you guys, and you need to know this, is you're going to find yourself going and taking a few of his courses. Just exactly like I did. Once I figured this thing out, and figured out it was going to take me to the next level of my my particular game, I immersed myself in it. I wrote a lot of checks, and I will tell you, it's among the most important things we ever, ever did. And I want to thank you for that. So Clubhouse Me, you, NLP, and give some people an eye of that, an opinion about what, what that looks for them. Well, what, what, let, let, let me backtrack just a little bit, too, because where we left off before the break, I was talking about stress and, and the need for optimism and positivity and to reclaim your brain. And how you reclaim your brain is through repetition, correct repetition, which is spaced repetition, but is consistent and you do it for long enough until it becomes automatic and reliable, until it becomes a habit. Everything that here's the thing you as a person, as a spirit being living in a rental vehicle, are filled with infinite possibility and opportunities and resourcefulness that most people don't even know that they have or they tap into because they're too busy living the conditioned life and the conditioned mindset they, they got growing up and that that was somehow they weren't enough. Life sucked. They couldn't do things, you know, and even if you're at the top of your game, a lot of people, you know, still have, you know, holes inside themselves where they don't feel like, you know, a complete person or like they can or like they're deserving. What I want to tell you is you're deserving and you're a complete person and you can learn that and you can live that. And it you don't have to go back and dig through crap. You don't have to do all sorts of hard things in order to find that. You don't have to kick people out of your life or do anything. You can learn to to really appreciate and love and enjoy yourself and and uh, and make and claim your life back and live life on your terms, which is the night the title of my book is live life on your terms, create the life you want, because it's really up to you to claim it back and to and to learn it. So by conditioning the mind, well, what does that mean? It means like if you want the body. Um, we got to take a break. I am oh, a okay. I'm a terrible talk show host. We'll be back right after this. That's quite all right. Okay, we got 30 seconds. Contactmapping.com. We're in the commercial. Contactmapping.com. It's only a 30-second commercial, so we'll be back in two seconds. But how, often, are, how often, how, are, how long are segments? That's, that the next up. segment's long. I'll give you that in two seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's longer than longer than Pinocchio's nose. 
two seconds to go. Here we go. And we're back. It is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show with Tom Chenault, with Rex Sykes. No Adrian, but the great Jason Kohler at the helm. And it is a great day. I hope you're listening to this. I hope you're understanding the power of your brain is the most important power. And I just love all of you. And I want you to listen to him because it's so very, very important to get yourself to the mindset. Every day it's mindset. I had a mountain to the climb today that was literally unsurmountable. And I got up at five o'clock this morning and I walked out in the yard and I did it. And I knew I was interviewing Rex, which made me present to what I needed to do to get my brain to the point that I could solve literally any problem. And by goodness, I did it. It was unsurmountable when I woke up and I got it done four hours ago because of you, Rex Sykes. Tell these people how important mindset is and consistent work on mindset, please. Well, thank you for that opportunity. And again, thank you and and Adrian and Jason for for having me here today. I love Jason. It's beautiful, a beautiful man. I appreciate him so much. And you guys, both of you guys. Um, so here is the here. Here's the thing, you know, you have an opportunity. I say there's dog crap or diamonds, you know, and I'm holding them off to you. Which do you choose? And a lot of people choose dog crap. And you have the opportunity to choose diamonds, and yet most people don't realize this. And why don't they realize this? Because they grew up. <laughs> you know, they had they were born and they grew up. They have their problems, you know, and then they and then they capitulate those problems over and over and over again by focusing on what's wrong in the past or what's wrong in the present or worrying about what's going to go wrong in the future. And so they spend most of their lives living less than gloriously, living less than what they can or could live like. Now, I want to tell you something really, really important. There's a lot of thought leaders out there who are just wrong. I mean, research shows that they're wrong. The ancient wisdom of the mystics shows that they're wrong. You don't have to work hard and struggle in order to get ahead. That is a myth. And I'll give you another one right after that. I'm not saying you don't have to take action or do action, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, people say, well, unless you struggle, unless you sacrifice, unless you do this, wrong. You know, the, the, the law of the universe works on the law of conservation of energy and the law of least effort, and so does your brain. Your brain has only two things uh, that, it, that it intends to do. One is to keep you alive, to help you survive, and to have you reproduce or replicate and thrive. That's all it does. And in order to do that, it, it lays out these neural networks of, of pathways that get wired together that create for ourselves habits. Now, what are habits? Habits are essentially a streamlined version of everything that you've learned. And if it becomes a habit, whether it's biting your nails or eating healthy or exercising or some other bad habit or some other good habit, it's all been wired in through consistent, constant repetition and, and and for a long enough time until it became automatic. You learn to drive a car or ride a bike in the very same way by going through this process and and you learned it and it seemed a little bit difficult and you had a lot of things to, to, um, to juggle when learning to drive, your attention, how to turn, how to signal, how to put your foot on the brake or if you had a, a stick shift, a whole other set of things. And you kind of talked your way through it and then one day you got in a car and boom, you know, you drove off to a friend's house or you got on your bike and you drove off. You didn't even think about it. it became a habit. I always tell people, if you wanted to learn to juggle, you first got to realize you're going to drop some balls. Let's so just get over that. You're going to drop balls. And then as you juggle, you start with two or three balls. If you keep at it and you keep at it for long enough and you enjoy it, guess what happens? Pretty soon you get good at juggling. And the better you get at juggling, the easier it becomes. And the easier it becomes, the better you get. So you create this momentum. But then it becomes a habit. You have a habit of being able to juggle well. Same thing is true with managing your mindset. Same is true with choosing diamonds. Now, here's another myth that I want to bust right away. There's no such thing as self-sabotage. Your brain doesn't yeah. sabotage you. It's in my no such thing. Ex no such thing. Expand on that. Your brain is designed to keep you alive and to keep you thriving. And it uses a lot of least effort and the conservation of energy to, to do that. It is a servant and it does what it learned to do. It does, it's kind of like your computer. Your computer has a program. If the computer isn't working, you don't say my, my, my computer is sabotaging me. You understand that there may be a glitch in the program. You, or you understand that you're not using the computer right, but you don't go, the computer is sabotaging me. You know, 
If you don't know how to ride a horse, a horse will go wherever it wants to go or it will stay still. You don't go, the horse is sabotaging me. You go, I need to learn to ride the horse in order to get where I want. So your mind isn't sabotaging you. It's doing what it's learned. It's doing the habits, these wired in habits, routinely, automatically, reliably, which is what you want it to do. Yeah. It saves you energy. It keeps you alive. It keeps you being able to be creative and do other things. So you want it to do that. The, the, here's the thing is some people learn bad habits or less than glorious behaviors and those they can change and trade for better habits and glorious behaviors. So it's really, it's not about the brain sabotaging you. It's doing everything it's supposed to do and you don't like it. And here's, and here's the thing, not you, but, but we don't like it. The conscious mind is a tiny, tiny portion of something that is billions and billions and billions of times more powerful than the conscious mind. It never sleeps. It's always awake. It's monitoring everything. You know, it has, it's people call, again, another myth, negativity bias. It does not have a negativity bias. That's a human judgment. It has a survival bias. It will look for threats in your environment, whether those are real threats or perceived threats or emotional threats, but it's not looking for negative things. It's not negative. It's, it's trying to keep you alive. We come along and say that's a negative event. I mean, think of it this way. Before humans were on the planet, there were earthquakes and lightning strikes and forest fires and floods, and nobody called them good or bad or right or wrong or negative or positive. They just were. Things are just what they are, and then we judge them. And we judge them from how we learn to judge them. Almost everything you do, you show up on the planet with a little bit of genetic baggage, but almost everything you do has been learned from, from rolling over and sitting up and learning balance and learning how to walk, learning how to feed yourself, learning how to use utensils, learning how to go to the toilet, learning how to read and write and all the, you know, and learning how to ride a bike and drive a car, learning how to communicate, use an elevator, open a door. Now think if, if, if it weren't streamlined, if it weren't habitual, if it weren't doing what it's supposed to do, you'd have to learn how to open a door every time you got to it. You'd have to learn how to use utensils every time you got to it. You'd have to learn how to eat all over again or feed yourself or toilet train all over again if it didn't wire these things in. So it wires them in so you don't have to put any energy into it anymore. So it operates automatically. And then our conscious mind goes, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's, 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 I'm sabotaging myself. I want to do this, but it does that. Well, it's doing what it's been programmed to do. And it's doing it wonderfully. And instead of you going, wow, you serve me, but you're doing things I don't want to do. Let me retrain you. Let me reprogram you. Let me recondition you so that you work on my behalf the way I want you to. We blame it. And then we miss the opportunity of training it. And so we live less than glorious in the dog crap because we don't realize that to get to the diamonds, we have to do it. So if you want to get the horse to go where you want it to go, you have to learn how to ride it. And then once you become an expert rider, you can take the horse wherever it wants to go because it's there to, to ride. You know, a really, really well-trained horse is incredible. But if you don't know how to ride a really, really well-trained horse, you confuse the horse. Well, that's kind of like what we do in, in our lives. We confuse ourselves because we don't know how to ride. We don't know how to program our brain. We don't know what to do. So we blame, we excuse, we have all these reasons why things don't work out. And it's all BS. And you can learn differently. You can design. I have a program called Mind Design. It's all about in, interior design. It's design the inside of your head so that the outside of the world pales by comparison. It design your life so that you live an incredible, joyful, wonderful life by using the brain how it already works. You don't want to have to reinvent the wheel or try and do something different or, or go counter to it. You don't want to have to work really hard to sacrifice the struggle to do it when you can do it easy and fun almost effortlessly, but it does require your attention and awareness. It does require that you consistently apply yourself. It does require that you invest in yourself in that way, because if you do nothing, nothing happens. So you'll always re -per perpetuate what you do. And, and for most people, every day they get up, they go, 40 years ago when I did this or that happened, I was abused as a child, it was this and that, all these. And they have all their history, a story of why they don't work well and why the problems are, or the government sucks or religion sucks or the people suck or this sucks. Instead of going, you know what? I'm 100% responsible for my life and I'm going to live it the way I want to live. That's why I created the Attitude Activator because attitude is the number one predictor for success in all areas of your life. If you don't activate your attitude, what do you have as an alternative? You know, I mean... If you're not positive and, and living a great life, what's the alternative? You know, I, 
to me, it's always kind of like a no brainer. Just jump in, do it, take control of your life and take control of your of your mindset. And it's based on principles and practices. Here's the other thing, just so you know, I do the ultimate NLP home study program and NLP is notorious not NLP because NLP is just the name of a field, but the, a lot of the practitioners think if I have two things that work really well, then I need four. And if I have four, then I need 12. And if I have 12, I need 144. And if I have 144, I need 516. You don't need all that crap. And this is, this is why I say it's not all created. I have the ultimate NLP home study course, which shows you how to use NLP, do NLP, but easy and fun and add it into your life in a way that works. Cause you don't want to have to learn, 50 things to remember. You just want to learn a couple of things, a few simple changes that make your life wonderful overall, a few simple changes that can pervade, can, can, can pervasively change you in every area of your life. So I'm here to simplify and to help people uplift themselves through more fun, through ease. And, you know, if you're somebody who wants to flagellate yourself, beat yourself up and, you know, and, and really, you know, get down and dirty, um, I can I can provide that for you, but that's not my first choice. So let me ask you this: people pass. So what they basically do is they file their past, their future or their present into their past, and then go live back into their past again, and wonder why all that happens to them. <clears throat> so what you can do is get people to a place where they're standing in the present, looking back at the past. And creating a future that's powerful because you're not defined by your past anymore, right? Yeah. That's all of you. Instead of saying, this is the way I am, you could live your life from this is the way I could be, right? Well, and something even more more important, than, I mean, this is brilliant, but um, there's the notion of living from the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You know, in other in other words... It's be, do, and have. If you are it, you can do it naturally because you're it. That's, it. It comes from you. You do it. You don't have to add it. You don't have to learn it. You don't have to do anything because you are it already. Right. If you are it, if you be it, then you can do it. And you're not just doing anything and you're not just doing more work or trying to be overly productive. You're doing the right actions that help you to have it. So it's be, do, have. And most people have it the other way around. In fact, most thought leaders, if you look at today's self-improvement world, they want you to have another car, another car, another house, another yacht, another jet, another something, because unless you have those things, you're not successful. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're preying on the very thing that is asked backwards to personal development. All right. got to take another break. It's the last break. Going into a short segment with Rex Sykes. Go to RexSykes.com and buy his book, just like I did. It'll open you up to a future you can't imagine. We'll be right back. Oh, that's you are such a beast. I knew this show was going to fly by. I knew you were going to talk fast, hard, and worth it. And this is the easiest interview of my life because you're so good at what you do. Well, you know, I hope I'm, I'm speaking short enough. I don't know how long the show is. I didn't get any information. About six minutes left. Oh, 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 oh okay. So we're going to talk about what they need to do to be like you. So here we go. And we're back. It's Tom Chenault. It is Rex Sykes. It is the Legacy Leadership Show. And this guy, holy mackerel, he's just a beast. And trying to do justice to what he can do in an hour is impossible. But I'm telling you one thing right now, going and buying his book, going to RexSykes.com, going and finding that gratitude clubhouse room, Go get next to him. He's a genius, and he's not pushy. So they're all obviously, yeah, he's not pushy enough. Because if he was pushy enough, I would have gotten this stuff from him 10 years earlier than I did. So take it away. You've got just a few minutes left. Tell these people how they find you, what they should do after this show to start their life off on the right track if it hasn't been. Wow, what an opportunity. Well, let me first say, I love my life. I love what I do. I am blessed in every way. One of the reasons why you didn't find me 10 years earlier is I kind of went backstage, back into corporate consulting so that I could be at home, raise my kids the way I wanted to instead of traveling around the world and, and being away from them. So I was a full-time, stay-at-home, divorced dad who was able to raise my kids and live the kind of life I've always wanted to live. And I continue to do that and I continue to help people and I'm just so blessed and thank you for helping me reach more people. Go to RexSykes.com. There is my 
My book is uh, available from Amazon in hardcover or paperback. And if you go there and then go back to RexSykes.com with your receipt code, I'll give you a $497 bonus training called the Mastery Loop, which is how we learn unconsciously accelerated whole brain learning um, in order to be able to transform our lives. Absolutely free. It's my gift to the people for, for coming in and, and getting the book. Because the book, the book won't change you unless you apply what's in the book. You know, you can read it and put it down like a novel, like a lot of people do. They read a book to get through it so they can say, well, I read the book. But if you actually apply what's in the book and study the book, you will transform. You will tran And I'm so pleased with Tom uh, talking about the book the way he did and so many people and the great people who do, um, who have read it and who endorse it and the testimonial. People are sending me pictures and, and rating and reviewing it at Amazon. I appreciate that. Um, the other thing is, is to do a program. If NLP interests you, do the Ultimate NLP Home Study Program. It's a, all of my programs online right now are go at your own pace. You can jump in any time, any place that you want, and 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 uh, it, self self study with with coaching and live support. So we do Zooms and question and answers and things to support you. We've got groups and private groups, Facebook groups, and other things to be there to support you. But I have Mind Design, which is kind of the signature. How do you live a happy life? You know, create yourself mind design the ultimate NLP home study program change your thoughts and transform your life which is on the law of attraction and how to create the abundance that you want to have or the kind of life that you want to have by mean managing your thoughts. how to get people to do what you want without begging pleading whining or guilt tripping is a powerful program of how do you connect create rapport and be able to influence people positively whether it's your children or customers or or strangers or um, bosses or employees I mean it's, it's really about communicating and communicating well there's so many the attitude activator is a is a program that you listen to with headphones that i think everybody needs and people who have been using it have been using it daily for decades it is really a powerful practice and it's designed to get you to take time from a busy world and devote that time to yourself while learning a process so that the actual program the audio program can do away with itself so once you learn the process so going through it and listening you wire it in and it's how to get unstuck and move forward. And people use it to go up, get up in the morning and go to bed at night. They use it to gain weight or lose weight. They use it to stop smoking or eat healthy. They use it to have an unstoppable attitude, to be more loving, to be able to communicate, to make more money. You name it, they use it. Because there are a lot of people out there who have put together, you know, like audio programs or CDs or headset programs that um, they do 10, 20, 30 of these audio programs and they keep selling them. I wanted to do one that you could use for anything you wanted to use it for. I really am a bad businessman, Tom. I, I put myself out of business because I, you know, I uh, I create one tape instead of 50 uh, so that people use it in 50 different ways. I, I remove myself from public life so I can live the life I want to live so that, you know, I can then come back and tell people, hey, you know what, if I do it, you can do it. I'm not, I'm not bright. I'm not smart. I'm not anything. I'm not talented. I'm not even good looking. So the point is, is if I can do it, you certainly can do it. And, and I'm here to help you, and I will help you in whatever way, shape, or form I can. You go to RexSykes.com right there, and we're there to help you. I mean, we really are there to help you. This I've been doing this for over 40 years. I've been studying this for over 50 years. I've been reading Napoleon Hill since 1966. So, I mean, you know, this, is, this has been my life mission. I want to reach everybody on the planet. So <laughs> I see Tracy say, looks pretty cute to me. Well, that made my day on top of everything else, being here on Tom and Adrian's show with Jason in the background and and, and all of the wonderful people. Um, I don't know if you know Gracie Dewar, but you, you better look her up on Facebook. That horse will run. She is an international Canadian, United States, Australian leader, social media expert, accomplished author. Wow. She's just a beast. You do want to get to know her. I do. I absolutely do. And as well as everybody else. And I should say this. I just posted it the other day because I never say it enough. I am available to hire. <laughs> I am available for speaking events, conventions, keynote, endnote, you name it, seminars, workshops. I mean, that is that is what I do. And uh, I did take uh, some time off, but I, I, I still do it. And I do it now. Well, Milwaukee, Wisconsin is lucky to have you. And uh, yeah, she just, but Tracy just bought your book. You guys go to Rex R E X Sykes S I K E S dot com and buy some of his stuff. Take a look at some of his courses. And you're cheap like me. Go over to Clubhouse and just suck his knowledge for free. The guy's amazing. We are going to get out of here, Rex. It's been a complete and total joy having you on the show. 
you're a national treasure. I don't get to see you enough. Uh, Carl DeVere just grabbed your book for me at the office. I read what I wrote about it, and uh, it made me happy that I have you for a friend. I love everybody. We'll see you all next week on the Legacy Leadership Radio Show. Back.